Just trying to get my practice swings in for next year. Hello and welcome to One North Main BCA's Magazine Show. I'm your host, Damon Convey. On this week's episode, we're going to take a look at the fifth annual John A. Waldron Memorial Wiffle Ball Tournament, as well as the home plate dedication here at Campanelli Stadium to the victims of substance abuse everywhere. Very prevalent issue in our community, but a wonderful event, donating a lot of funds, people having a terrific time out here on the hallowed grounds of the Rock Stadium. Let's go inside and check out people hitting some wiffle balls. Well, I'm going to dedicate that run to the Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament, just like Mary Waldron dedicated the home plate of the tournament to victims of substance abuse in our community. Obviously, a very prevalent issue, and the Waldron family, by virtue of the Wiffle Ball Tournament, have been able to donate a large sum of money to the cause. Let's go see the guys and gals in the tournament who helped make that donation possible. I'm here with Anna Dowd. She is sort of helping out with one of the causes that the Wiffle Ball Tournament is supporting. Anna, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and how the Wiffle Ball Tournament will help your organization. So I am the coalition coordinator for the Brockton Area Opioid Abuse Prevention Collaborative. And what we do is we work with the town of Brockton and the towns of East Bridgewater, Whitman, Hanson, Rockland, and Bridgewater to help prevent opioid use in the community as well as other substance use. So um, the Wiffle Ball Tournament is helping to promote education and awareness around opioid use and overdose deaths in the community. People are willing to help. There's various programs in Brockton. There's the Champion Plan and in East Bridgewater there's an EB Hope Drop-In Center. Just get out there and ask for help. A lot of people are scared to make that first step, but reaching out is, can start your whole new life. So on August 25th at 7 p.m., there will be an overdose vigil to memorialize those that we have lost to um, the opioid em epidemic. It will be held at Massasoit at the Quad. And if for more information, you can go to our Facebook page, opioidoverdoseprevention.org is our website, and then Brockton Area Opioid Abuse Prevention Collaborative is our Facebook page. Another member of the clan who is out here to support the Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament is State Representative Jerry Cassidy. Uh, very good friends with John Waldron. Jerry, what will you remember most about John? Why is it so important for this event to carry on his legacy? John, John was a hero in, in my mind. He was the uh, yeah, he and I worked together with the late Senator Tom Kennedy for years and years. And uh, he and I grew up together. And uh, you know, uh, in fact, my uh, office now is uh, where uh, John and Mary met uh, in the in the state house. There, uh, uh, Mary's uh, my one of my best best friends too. And you know, it's uh, it's just uh, so nice to see his, his name carry on. You know, from from here on. Yeah, that was my first piece of uh, legislation that uh, I was uh, lucky to vote on. It was nice to see the governor and the uh, whole legislature come together and uh, sign the uh, you know, landmark uh, legislation for the opioid bill uh, that uh, passed uh, overwhelmingly. And uh, it uh, you know brings uh, things together like the uh, stay away to re recovery. 
uh, which I think it's up to 180 people who have had beds uh, uh, come through and you know put people in uh, uh, shelters where where they belong. And you know, with debt of gratitude, goes out to Brewster Ambulance, who uh, they've uh, they've uh, stepped forward and you know bringing them to these uh, these beds here. That key piece of legislation, a very good first step. But everyone always asks, sort of, what's the next step? So, in in your eyes, where do we go from here? Yeah, absolutely. Our next step is uh, probably to uh, key down on you know getting more beds for the uh, the, the people who are uh, addiction and uh, cutting cutting back on the uh, the, the pills that the uh, doctors allow. You know, uh, some some people I've met, <coughs> it's very difficult that uh, you give 30 pills for you know wisdom teeth out. Uh, you know, somebody who has wisdom teeth, and you know they get rid of it. Uh, but it's just uh, just unbelievable. We're going to have to go after the uh, some of the doctors, dentists, that uh, you know we we have to cut back on that. And you know, there's always room for improvement on every every bill. I am here with a uh, this crew behind me that we're going to have a little bit of some fun tomorrow at the fifth annual John A. Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament. And um, this year, we so happen we always dedicate home plate. And it was really important to us, as we have family and friends um, that have lost dear ones. But we have also had a lot of friends who are, are celebrating the fact their family are in recovery. It is all of our duty to be cognizant of this, to be supportive, to be there, just to hold their hands. That sometimes that little bit can mean all the difference. So with me today, I have family members, the, the Kelly family, along with the Curtis family. Just give a, a wave, hello. Thank you for being here. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of courage to be here. And we welcome you and to be part of our fun that we're having today at our little exhibition. Um, also behind me are all the volunteers, not actually not all of them, but a number of the volunteers that make this event happen. We've raised $18,000 last year and we're closing in on that and our goal is to make yes that's a great accomplishment and our goal is to make contributions back to Brockton and in this case our our contribution is going to be um, some funds from the Just Checking In Fund to the various organizations to help and fight opioid. Two of the very biggest supporters of the Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament are Linda and George Kelly Unfortunately, they are here under quite sad circumstances. Just a short time ago, they very unfortunately lost their son, Jonathan, to the opioid ec epidemic. They've been so kind as to come on with us and just sort of discuss Jonathan's legacy, what people can do to help, share some stories about the family. Guys, take it away. Thank you. I'm not sure if you can zoom in on that picture there, but the picture my wife is holding is of my father-in-law, Manny Amaral, and our son, Jonathan Kelly. Uh, they were inseparable. They're very close to one another. Uh, my father-in-law, father as he aged, tended to tell a lot of stories over and over again. Jonathan was the best listener in the family. He would sit with Grandpa Annie and listen to stories as long as he could talk. And uh, they were quite a pair together. And I think that it helps to show that our sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters all have loving family relationships. And sometimes things just don't work out the way that we want them to. It wasn't for lack of trying, and Jonathan actually was very active and very involved in his recovery process, but had medical issues as well, and that ultimately cut his time short. And I think if he had had more time, he would have been successful, but it, it was a, a disease that just ravaged him. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you for Mary for presenting um, this um, uh, home plate to the families. We need the support, that's why we started our program. We had two sons that ended up addicted to heroin and we didn't know for the longest time. Our kids were good kids, they went to school, they were in sports, they were loving family members, they had jobs, and there's just something about the heroin addiction that grabs them 
gets a hold of them and just takes them for a ride and they don't even know it. Something they just tried out of something for fun. One and it, as a recreational choice, the other as a prescription medication that was right. issued for wisdom teeth. So right. it doesn't matter how the addiction ultimately comes into play. Um, it is a very, very powerful drug that as we have learned over the last five and a half years that can take control of, of the mind and uh, just, you know, the craving is incredible. And, uh, you know, our program is called The Deadly Silence because one of the things that we were dealing with during this, you know, difficult period of time was that, you know, it was an emotional roller coaster of who, where, when, and how do you seek help? Who do you talk to about this? Nobody wants to open up about it, but, uh, you know. And we were totally clueless. We didn't know what a sober home was. We didn't know what a rehab was. We didn't know detox. what a halfway or a detox. So all of these were totally different terms for us. And to us, we felt like we were bad parents. We didn't realize that this was a brain disease, that this drug took a hold of their brains and just controlled it. They had no control over it. And people were telling us, well, let them hit bottom. Unfortunately, you can't do that because the bottom could be death. You have to bring bottom to them. You have to get them to seek help. First off, just, just talk about how this came about. Obviously, you know, you lost your husband, John, incredibly sad. But from something sad comes something amazing at the same time. Talk a little bit about that experience. You know, it, um, it's hard, right? You lose someone and um, your, your head's in a cloud and you don't know what to do. You're spinning around and, you know, it, it took a little bit of time, some conversation between the two of us and family members and saying, you have to do something now, you can't wait, and what is it going to be? And we, throughout our summers down the Cape, always played wiffle ball, um, 4th of July, tradition. It's tradition. And John was a big guy about tradition, tradition about things about religion, about family, um, and 4th of July was down the Cape playing wiffle ball with family and friends. So that's how this all happened, and John was such a, a giving guy to his friends and family, but to his community. Like, no one loved Brockton more than John did, and even though I'm a girl from Chicopee, like, I was, I will always be not a person from Brockton. Um, but we both decided um, the city of Brockton and the area of friendly friends are so had been so good to us in our our time of need. When I was going through breast cancer, um, when we lost John, um, we had family and friends that just wrapped their arms around us. I mean, figuratively as well as literally around us. And when we could have, each one of us could have taken a turn a different way easily as what we heard from the families that were here. We could have been in deep depression and, and not handling such tragic news. We're blessed to have each other. We're blessed to have family and caring friends. And it's our way of giving back. It's what John would want us to do. He would not want us to be sorrow and, and, and be um, not be in the state of, of, of what we are. We celebrate his life every day. So wiffle ball is our way of celebrating. So what does wiffle ball um, the Brockton Rocks and opioid issue have to do with each other and when it came time for us dedicating home plate it really is you, you saw in the eyes of the Kellys and you saw in the eyes of the um, the Curtis family and and thousands of thousands of others they're they, you know they, the struggle and it's important that we take a venue such as a rocks game or a wiffle ball to raise awareness, bring it to, to the, to the to, that it's not on the back burner. So together we thought that that was uh, the right idea. Did you play at the fifth annual Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament this year? 
because I know I did. Unbelievable time had by all 50 plus teams donating an incredible sum of money to the victims of substance abuse in our community. Let's head down to the field and see what the action's all about. You don't come to this every year. You don't know what you're missing. Yeah, this bro. is the best. Yes, City of Champions. Johnny Walden was the best human I ever met. the crowd at the Brockton Rocks game have the dedication of home plate to the families and victims of opioid substance abuse. Um, it was great. It really was. It was an opportunity to educate but also support our Brockton community and family and friends. Yeah, I think it was exactly, exactly what my mom said. It was nice to bring together the families and kind of give them that moment um, to recognize the issue and recognize that we are there to help as much as we can. Well, and the other last thing is, is that, you know, if you can see around today, there's so much going on mm -hmm. and having that home plate dedication sometimes gets a little bit lost. So it gave us the opportunity to really focus about what it was about. And this year it's about the families and victims as well as celebrating the those that are in recovery. We're playing for Harambe today. Who was Harambe? He was a Western little end girl. <laughs> yes? He was, what, how did, how did he, he was a warm soul. <laughs> what happened? An untimely death? Yeah, like, some kid jumped in the cage. Harambe just wanted to play. They thought he was trying to kill the kid. They killed Harambe. He wasn't going to kill the kid. <laughs> when did he pass? <laughs> when did he pass? It was May. It was May. It was May, so they, the, does it still sting that yeah. Harambe is no longer with us? Yeah. That's why we're winning it for him. It hurts. Southwest Little League. Or, uh, yeah. Three or four of us are uh, coaches on the, on the league, so we just had to put together a team. How do you feel today? Like champions. Oh, like, yeah. Like champions. I'm all warmed up. We feel swell. <laughs> the Dragon Boys was our college uh, rap group, you know, out here. <laughs> Can you rap? Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I was just, rap. I was just the producer. Oh, they're coming. All right, give me a rap. I'm not actually a rapper. <laughs> Yo, I'm not a rapper, though. I'm not a rapper, though. I have my, uh, my small uh, shamrock that a bunch of us had after John passed away, and I pulled out at certain events, and uh, so I had to wear it today. I went, th I went two for three last year. We won a lot of games. <laughs> Do all, I want to also tell you something. We all played. Except for this young man, we all played baseball together at St. John's. With Wall, with, with, with John, Watt, with yeah. John Wall. We all played yeah. baseball with John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And him and I were the fastest guys on the team. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. In all reality, him and I were the two slowest guys in the team. <laughs> yeah, the problem was, is John played the outfield like he was filled with hand grenades. <laughs> <laughs> We support Mary's uh, wiffle ball tournament for John every year. John was a good friend of mine, and Mary and Casey. So this is a great cause, so we're here to have fun. I'll be honest with you, what I'm here to do is heckle people. When I see them come in, I'm here to bother them. I'm here to scare them. It wouldn't be complete if we didn't get a couple of the cable gurus. So let's go right up to them, take care of business. Oh, well, well, well. What's going on? What's so up, Jay? How are you feeling today? Feeling great, feeling great. Yeah? Um, I think we're going to win. We take the... Uh, we're gonna beat every team here on the field. Hey, tell us about the shirt. It's just a shirt. Being lazy is great. Who came up with the team name? Would it happen to be you, sir? <laughs> yeah, I take full credit. Uh, with the assistance of the guy at the t-shirt shop, so, yeah. <laughs> Go. Feeling? Getting it this year. Yeah, we're feeling it. We're feeling good. Why the name of the boys? There's only two girls. <laughs> yeah, there's two girls. We're gonna win. We're gonna win, win this. She sounds kind of confident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Like, what are you going to do to stay hydrated? Drink water. Oh, water, you know? water, water. Okay, all right. Nobody yeah. said I'm going to the I'm going to the bar. No. Anybody plan on doing that? No. That's afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bigger this year than it has been in the past, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is, um, and it's great because what that means is is that. Um, more revenue is generated to give back to the community, more scholarships are given, more opportunity to support the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA and the Frederick Douglass Ave and the Art Week. This is actually my second year on the team. Uh, I met Casey two years ago and uh, been coming ever since. And uh, it's a great event, it's a great event for the community of Brockton of which 
you know, I'm kind of a, a guest in. Uh, I'm from Dedham originally, so um, to have this community um, and see this community bonding the way that they do um, and the great people that come out of this community is, is amazing to see. You look like you're loaded this year. Yeah, we're a little bit, uh, we're a little more pumped than last year. We brought in a few ringers from Bridgewater State. So yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I just hope I make it through the first inning. <laughs> this is our third year. Back for more. And uh, we're going for back-to-back -back this year. Oh, well, you won last year. Chance. Of course. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding oh, me? We, and we're going to win again this year. We're winning again this year. Eight no last year. I, I yeah, we're I left. Undefeated. I left. We just, we, so, uh, so yeah. what, 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 what happened last year that you're going to carry it to this year? Awesome. They are pitching, determination, integrity, chemistry, chemistry. chemistry. Great chemistry. Chemistry, I mean. It's all about chemistry. Every other team was just looking at us, thinking that they wanted our bond. I mean, it just. <laughs> it just agrees. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. We're the biggest group of studs ever assembled. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at these squids, honestly. Like, I'm no, take a glance around. I'm being serious. So, I don't remember, but in years past, did you have the muscle tees going? Or? Oh, yeah. oh, every single yeah. year. Every okay. Year. Every so, the intimidation out a factor, more. how much does that play into it? <laughs> we do biceps, like, the whole month before. I mean, Intimidation is about 75% of our game. Right. Look, look how far it's come. Five years, the last three have been extraordinary with all the sponsors, all the teams, and all the different colored jerseys. I mean, this is... An amazing event for the city, for the Waldron family, uh, for the city of Brockton. So I'm excited to be back. What's in the cooler? That's Probably not ours. Water and more That's water. not ours. <laughs> <laughs> the lawnmower was better not come at us this year again. That's all I gotta say. And they better watch out. Game over. <laughs> We're the uh, Brockton High School Alumni Association. How are you feeling today? We're feeling awesome. We're ready to play today. We're excited to be part of it. So thanks for having us. This was all my brother Danny's idea. He's been growing this beard since the first tournament took place. He won't shave it until we win a trophy. So be looking out for that. If we win today, come over with the Clippers. Keep up with the team name. Dude. What is it? No joke. First year winners. Hey, because it's no joke. No, no joke. joke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, friends, Casey and I have some great friends, but you know what, they're also committed to the same thing that everybody else on this field is. They love this city and they know what this event does and I think that's why they come back. And out. Oh. 
How the heck can we go? Well, here's Team Trinity. We're here. We're here. The team's going to win, and I told you already we're favored to win this thing. And uh, we're excited. You guys excited? Oh, All the college kids here. We're going to win our first game this year. This is the Guaranteed. one, baby. This is the one. These guys won the Nationals in New Hampshire yeah. two weeks ago. Wiffle ball champions. Oh, really? You're the Champions. champions. I brought them in. I brought them in from New Hampshire. How much did they cost? 500 a kid. Blues Cruise and Team Trinity Catholic to field four. Let's do it, all right? Who's up? Let's go, boys. Yeah. Bad yeah. call by the up. <laughs> What's your role today? Sherry, I think she's going to whip some butt today. I get, I get a feeling. I don't know. I think she's bringing a Ray game. Does Mad Dog Matt Nelson have enough tension span to play even more than one inning? No. We're doing real well. Wink, wink. Savage Beach Combers, they're pretty good. Very good. We got spanked. Hit that! Oh! Swing at that! It was over my head. It doesn't matter! You okay, girl? Yeah. How'd you get the name? Uh, some kid on lawnmowers made up a story and it kind of like traveled around like some parties or something and everyone just started calling me it. I do want to be able to say thank you to Brockton Community Access for continually to support by being here and reporting about how much fun this community is. We are a diverse group from all over, um, from the city and outside of the city. It gets to show what Brockton's about. Um, and, and that makes, I think, my husband would be loving the fact that he were able to showcase Brockton to a whole bunch of people. Brockton's the best city of all time, just city, let that be known. City of champions. City of champs, baby. That's all what it is. day, That's all it day. Is. So much thanks to Mary Waldron. Unbelievable job organizing this thing. The Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament is one of the best events in oh, Brockton. Yeah. Well, I got my bat and unfortunately it is time to go home. We've seen a wonderful weekend of Waldron Wiffle Ball extravaganza. The beautiful and moving home plate dedication to the victims of substance abuse and their families everywhere. And then we saw the fifth annual Waldron Wiffle Ball Tournament, an incredible time had by all. Don't forget guys, check out our website at bcatv.org. You can also find some of our content online at youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels. Once again, for everybody at One North Main, I'm Eamon Convey.